Brock Heward of ESPN and 710 ESPN Seattle joining us on 104.5 The Team, your home for New York sports. And Brock, first things first, man. Last time we talked to you, we said, what does Michigan need to do for their head coaching position? And you said, get all the money you can, go after Jim Harbaugh. If you can't get Jim Harbaugh, you're not going to do it right whatsoever. So what's first off, right off the top, Brock Heward, welcome back, yes. my friend. Huh? Well done. I don't remember that. I think I had blacked out at that point. I believe you guys were my seventh call in that hour, so if I said that, great. I got something right maybe one time in my life. Yeah, you're like, they did, though. By the way, they did get it right, and uh, and they got it absolutely right for their school, for the Big Ten, for all the conversation that's going to be built now over the months and months ahead. I know Jim is going to be on the on the national title broadcast crew somewhere, pregame, postgame, already you know, doing his thing and, and spinning the conversation Michigan's way. So that was the right move, no doubt about it. So how long till Michigan becomes relevant again? Do we expect big things from them immediately? Can they turn it around this year? I, I don't think you're going to see a one-year turnaround, no. I don't think he's walking into a program like Urban Meyer did with a, a ready-made quarterback and so many of the pieces are already in place. I think it's going to for his system, and you always hear that all the time, and alums hate to hear it, donors hate to hear it, they want that instant fix, but but it's going to take just a little bit, I think, of time to, to change the personality at the line of scrimmage and become who they want to be. Now, they took a little step, I think, that way, and Doug Nussmeyer tried to get back to some of that power of football. So schematically, it's not going to be as crazy as it was from Rich Rod to Brady Hoke. But as far as really a culture and a personality and an imprint where you're going to say, oh, yeah, man, that's Bo Schimbeckler, that's Jim Harbaugh, that's the way it's supposed to be. That's not an overnight flip the switch. That is going to take a little bit of time. What do you think of his first hire reuniting with DJ Durkin? Pretty smart. Yeah, I think he's put together a really good staff. And, and, I, and I think the people that he's pulled, both from the NFL ranks, the collegiate ranks, are people that know exactly what they're stepping into as well. I mean, Jim, Jim is not the easiest guy. I've known people that have been on his staff. He's not always the easiest guy to work with. He's not always the easiest guy to cover. But come Saturday, he's usually the guy that gets his team best prepared to play. And, and they have Urban Meyer, and they have Mark D'Antonio, and they have James Franklin, and they have so much conversation. Because let's face it, perception is reality sometimes. And, and as I got into my bowl season, and Gary Patterson was very clear about that going into the, the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. He said perception is reality. How we play in this game is going to matter moving ahead. It's going to change conversations moving into next season. And it absolutely will for TCU and the hire of Jim Harbaugh, the conversation, the perception that he's going to bring right away will be uh, will be very, very beneficial in every way for university and conference. ESPN College Football Analyst Brock Heward with Armin in the back on 104.5 The Team. Brock, how in the world is Urban Meyer in the championship game with a third-string quarterback? Because <laughs> he's one of the best in the business, man. He is really one of the best. And I'll tell you, I'll, I'll go back to that Peach Bowl story one more time, and I promise you that will be the last <laughs> Peach Bowl story because it wasn't terribly competitive. But sitting there for a couple days and working with Tim Tebow on that broadcast, and you know, a lot of conversation leading into the game and just you know, a lot of fun in our meetings, and, and you could just feel almost this little quiet confidence that Tim had in Urban Meyer. Uh, even more than a bias, just just knowing that, that what this guy does to get his teams ready for these these moments, and the record's been pretty good and speaks for itself. And, and Tim felt that they had a much better shot against Alabama than I certainly felt, and I think just about anybody, as most people in most of the country and even Vegas was picking Alabama in a pretty substantial way. But, but Tim was right. Behind the scenes, there's not many that get a program, get a team, ready to go on the big stage in the big moments as well as Urban Meyer has. All right, so Urban Meyer, Brock Heward, gets all this credit for what he's done at Ohio State. But meanwhile, they're playing Oregon, and we most people in the country don't even the name, even know the name of that guy, the head coach there, Mark Heffenberg. I, no, I mean, <laughs> who knows at this point? Is, is, do you believe that the Oregon head coach should be getting a little more props than what he is? Should we be talking about Mark Helfrich a little more than we have been? Oh, it's not Chip Kelly? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that, is there, exactly, bad. though. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, it's Phil Knight. Doesn't Phil Knight, <laughs> isn't he on the headsets? Yeah. Doesn't, he, doesn't he, like, call the plays? It's, it's more TV time. Bo Jackson in Nike gear. That's all it is. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I will say this. I've, I've probably gotten as close to that program as any in my, in my years at, at ESPNA. It's about a five-hour drive from Seattle down I-5 to Eugene. It's a really easy flight. I've grown up in the conference. I've known, obviously, the, the Ducks before 
before Mike Pilate, there was Rich Brooks and seeing the succession and the growth and everything that they've done there and everything that Chip built. And in many ways, Helfrich is exactly the right guy. He is egoless. He doesn't care. The attention doesn't have to be upon him. It can be upon Scott Frost. It can be upon Marcus Mariota. It can go ahead and, and dish it out to Phil Knight. He doesn't really care. And I think in many ways, he is the perfect coach at the perfect timing for this program. Now, you, when, you, when you look at this, this championship game, all we've heard is how great the SEC is. The SEC's uh, biggest fan in the world, Colin Cowherd, actually said now the Pac-12 <laughs> is the best conference. How, do we just give the SEC too much credit, or, or is this a fluke? Yeah, I think it probably goes a little bit both ways. I, I think I'd be careful to overreact to the five SEC East or West games and say, yep, yep, they were a disaster this year. Much like we probably all, and, and I'll raise my hand, probably overreacted with their non-conference schedule and what they did in the month of September and undefeated. And, and they did have some pretty good wins out of conference this year. So I, I got my eyes and laid my eyes upon every one of those programs all season long. There is an awful lot of talent. There's going to be a ton of guys drafted off of all of those SEC West teams. They're going to play a long time in the NFL. But, but boy, they did not impress in the bowl season. And I'll go back to what I said earlier. Perception is reality. College football is a sales world. It's not the bottom line business that I'm going to be taking in here Saturday night with the Panthers and the Seahawks. It's just not that. It is a sales world. It's a marketing world. Perception does matter. And it was a brutal, brutal bowl season for the SEC West. And that's a boon for both the Pac-12 and the Big Ten, I think, the biggest winners of them all. Brock, you were at ESPN on 104.5, the team. You're home for New York sports. So how are you feeling this national championship game, Brock, Ohio State, Oregon? Who do you like at this point? What do we look for on Monday night? Well, there's two things. I think number one, where we missed the mark and where maybe in the conversation I had with you guys a month ago, we didn't talk enough about, and that was who was playing really well, who got hot at the right times. We talk about it a lot in the NFL, right? Yep. I mean, through the years, we've seen the Packers, we've seen the Steelers, we've seen the six seed go on and win Super Bowls, and it's so much about the team that is that is hot at the end of the season playing their best ball. That That's a very common refrain in the NFL, but I don't think any of us use that quite enough because I don't think there was a hotter team at the end of the year than both Oregon and Ohio State. Alabama wasn't. I mean, they nearly benched their starting quarterback in the Iron Bowl, and Mississippi State fell short at the end of the year, and and those teams, and, and even Florida State, stumbling a number of times and bumbling around and finding ways to win close games, there's no doubt over the last six, seven weeks, the two best teams in college football are going to be playing Monday night. They got better and better as the season wore on. They overcame some early season hiccups. They got healthier. They got fresher. And I think we're going to be set for a fantastic game. I think there's going to be a bunch of points. I know that uh, over-under is an awfully high number, but I think we're going to get there. I think both defenses are going to be challenged to stop each other's offense, and I think it's going to come down to a, to a fourth quarter where an Oregon has to hope that the Heisman Trophy winner, the best player in college football, puts his imprint all upon the final 15 minutes. Speaking of that Heisman Trophy winner, let me ask you the question that's going to be asked about 75 million times. <laughs> yeah, Mariota. Like, I take Mariota, and I don't think about it. It's not even, to me, a real conversation. Really? Go what? ahead and let Tampa debate it, and go ahead and let others, and you may feel otherwise, but I, I like guys that don't hurt the football team. And when you have a defensive, I, I promise you this, if you were to get 100 defensive coordinators and 100 defensive-minded head coaches on your, on your phone and survey them, I bet you 90% of them pick Marcus Mariota. Now, on the flip side, you get 100 offensive-minded coaches and 100 <laughs> head coaches, and you may get 90 of them picking Jameis Winston. And living in a town where the Super Bowl – for the first time ever, and the Lombardi Trophy is sitting in its headquarters because of their defense, I'm biased, but I will lean on a defensive mindset and a quarterback that can both make unbelievable plays, but more than anything, not hurt his football team, and that's what Mariota's done better than anybody else. So how far, how far should Jameis Winston fall in your mind? I mean, how, how, At what point are you comfortable taking him in the draft? Oh, I think they're going to be the number one and two pick. Yeah, I, I think very clearly in a, in, a, in a league that has Ryan Lindley starting games in the month of December in a playoff game. Uh, yeah, I think this is, this league is still starving for difference-making franchise elite quarterbacks, and I think they're going to go one and two, and I think Tampa Bay with, with a Levy Smith is going to settle on a Mariota. I think he'll fit that market beautifully. I think he'll fit what they want to do there schematically and become a defensive-minded first team with a, with a quarterback that's a difference-maker. 
I think he goes one, and my bet is Winston probably goes right behind him. Brock Hewitt of 710 ESPN Seattle with Armin in the back. Those Seahawks looking really, really good right now. What, if there's any way the Carolina Panthers can upset them, what, what, what has to happen? Uh, I, you know, let's hope that never happens. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I want to – you guys do local radio. How long have you guys been doing the local radio, by the way? We've been doing our show together for almost a year now. Almost a year. So six years for us when we started our station here. It'll be six years next month. And I'll tell you what, man, going to the Super Bowl last year and, and seeing some of the national radio guys and the number of them that came up to me and said, man, I envy you. Man, there is nothing better, is there, than doing local radio when you've got a team like you got here in Seattle and and just the ride that it was to the Super Bowl last year. And, and now that you're on the doorstep of it again, 120 minutes away, all at home in your building where Russell Wilson's 24-2. and two. So I'll point to those two games. That's the recipe. The only two times that Russell Wilson and Pete Carroll have lost in three years was Arizona in a rainstorm last year where they really pinched the pocket and did not allow Russell at any time to escape and be the magician he often is. And then uh, that was Arizona. And then Dallas this year controlled the game and controlled it by running it and possessing the football. So those are the ways. Those are the only ways I think that Seattle's not in a Super Bowl is they face an opponent here, whether it's Saturday night or the following Sunday, that, that, that takes away some of the magic of Russell Wilson with his creativity and then really possesses the ball offensively and wears down a defense that right now is playing at a historic rate. As a former quarterback, can you put, in, put into words – how good Russell Wilson has been this year? He's 40 and 13 in three years. That's all you need to know. No one's won more games in the history of the NFL in their first three years than this guy. He's the perfect complement to what they do defensively. He's the perfect complement to what Pete Carroll wants to do with the identity of his football team, with the work ethic, with the commitment, with the selflessness. Uh, in many ways, Marcus Mariota to me. And again, I may be a little biased living in the Pacific Northwest and covering these two guys and seeing them as much as I have. But Mariota, to me, is a six foot four inch Russell Wilson. Whoa. Does whatever is asked at any point. Very rarely turns the ball over. Is an incredible decision maker. Is an incredible game changing athlete when the game calls for it. And that's why, like I said earlier, I think Marcus is going to be the number one pick, and why uh, Russell Wilson's one of the best in, in all the NFL. Now, now, when you look at this year's Seattle team. A uh, little bit worse, the same, better than last year's Seattle team? Where do you rank them? So the way they're playing right now, they're better than they even were a season ago. Yeah, the, what, what they've done over the last 10 weeks and, and what they've done over the final stretch, winning six in a row and nine of ten and everything after sitting there at three and three and really backs against the wall and on the brink and, and what they have found with the, with, the, with the trust with one another, the accountability, everything you're hearing and going to be reading about, over the next couple of days of, of the meeting of the minds of the team that had to really come together and put an air of the grievances and put last year aside and put Percy Harbin aside. They have done that. Their defense is playing unbelievable ball. Their offense, especially now with their center, Max Unger coming back, their offense rushes the ball better than any in the history of their franchise. Man, they are going to be a really, really tough out. And if Carolina can do it, I think I will. I know Pete will. I think everybody will applaud because it's going to take a Herculean effort to knock them out. So from the sounds of it, we'll see you in Phoenix. That's right. <laughs> well, I sure hope so. Yeah, I, I, you know what? I, I wish I could have been wrong on the Harbaugh one so I could be right on that one because I'd much rather be right on the Seahawks getting back to Phoenix well, maybe it's than I streak. was on Jim heading back to Ann Arbor. You're just starting a streak on our show. That's all it is. Okay, perfect, and perfect. We'll, we'll then we'll let you do this again. Exactly. We'll let you continue the streak in Phoenix. We'll be on Radio Row and uh, Brock Heward of ESPN, 710 ESPN Seattle. As always, man, thank you so much for your time, Brock. It was greatness. Thank you. Hey, you got it, guys. Hope to see you down in Glendale.